Padlet by going to padlet.com in any web browser. From here, you can simply click on create a Padlet and have one already. However, if you have an account, there are some added benefits and features that are very helpful uh, for teachers. So I do suggest signing up for a free account. I already have one, so I will log in. All right, now that I'm logged in, I'm taken to my dashboard and here I can see all of my recent activity and recent Padlets. Today, I'd like to create a new one. So I'll go up to the corner and hit new Padlet. And here it is, it's that simple, it's already finished. However, there are some settings we can adjust to make it even more useful. If I come over here to the gear, I can click on it and open up all of my settings. I can give my Padlet a title, I can enter a description. I can even give my Padlet a little icon just to make it interesting. From here, I can click on wallpaper and I can add a different background. You can even upload one of your own. Now you can get creative like this and use some different graphic organizers as the background uh, to help students organize their ideas, which is useful. So as you can see, there are lots of options. And of course, by adding your own, you can make anything you like. On the layout section, you can choose from three different options. Freeform means uh, posts will end up anywhere at all on the board. If it's quite active, that can get really messy really quickly. So you might want to choose either stream or grid, which will help organize uh, the ideas for you. If it's more important where things are placed and you want students to be able to group them in certain places, then freeform is the option for you. If you click on privacy, you have different options as to who can access your Padlet and whether they can actually write on the Padlet or uh, view or moderate. Notifications can be turned on if you'd like to receive an email when something's added to your Padlet. When you click on address, you can change the way that students will access your Padlet. By default, getting to your Padlet, it's, Padlet is really tricky because you have to type in this really long random string of characters, which is really challenging to do. But if you choose this option, you can type in a much more user-friendly option. And as long as it's an option you haven't used before, it will be available and you can pick it. And now, your students can more easily get to the Padlet wall. You could also make a copy of a Padlet you've done before if you needed a new one, or you could delete your whole wall. Now that we've set up our Padlet how we like it to be, one really good trick is also going to the share section. Uh, it generates a QR code to get to your Padlet wall. So if you printed out this QR code, uh, your students could scan it to really easily get to this specific Padlet wall. It's really useful, especially with younger students that have a hard time typing in an address. From here, to use your Padlet, students simply have to go to any web browser from any device and type in that address you just created, and then they're taken to this exact Padlet wall. From there, they can double click on your wall and they can add their ideas. It can simply be text, or they can also upload various attachments. So it's a really great way to collect ideas from your whole class in one spot. Um, I use it quite often with, for example, Picolage. If all of my students have created a Picolage and I want to collect them, rather than having students email those Picolages to me, I'll create a Padlet wall where they can upload their work and also see the work of others. 